Hello, this is uh, Ed with Ritchie Industries. Today we're going to talk with you a little bit about our pressure regulators. Uh, this is the kit that comes with our pressure regulator. You have the pressure regulator. It also comes with hose barbs. Uh, this hose barb would be a, for the 5 8 hose that is used on our 3 quarter inch valves, or larger units. Notice I have already put some Teflon tape on this. When you assemble this, you're going to want to put Teflon tape or pipe dope on those threads. The 3 8 hose barbs are for the half inch valve or our smaller units. And there also includes some hose clamps to clamp onto the hose so you can get a good tight seal there. Ritchie offers valves that can accommodate water pressures up to 60 to 80 PSI. Uh, there are instances where pressures can be at the higher end of that and even higher. Uh, and that is where we would recommend the pressure regulator. Uh, to install a pressure regulator, we're going to uh, cut the water line and then just insert this into the water line before the uh, float valve. I'm now going to show you how to install your pressure regulator on a CT2 unit. So the first step I'm going to do is I'm going to reach down and shut off my supply water. If this unit were installed there would be a shut off valve underneath here. Um, so I'm going to reach down in there and shut that off. Then I'm going to go ahead and loosen my bulkhead. And if you've if you've left a little bit of slack in your hose in your water line, you should be able to pull that up a little bit, and you should be able to pull that insulation down to get access to your water line. Now, to install the regulator, uh, we're going to have to we're going to have to cut this insulation so that regulator can stick out. So I'm going to push that insulation down. Now when I cut this hose, I want to make sure I'm going to cut it at a position where I know I can still get a screwdriver in to tighten up another hose clamp on it. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this hose probably somewhere in this area right here. Okay, so I have my pressure regulator, I have installed my hose barbs, I have put Teflon tape on the threads. You can use Teflon tape or pipe dope, either one will work. I'm going to put one of my hose clamps on the end of my cut hose. Then I'm going to install my pressure regulator. and then tighten up that hose clamp. Okay. Then I'm going to take my other hose clamp and put that on the cut hose that's still attached to my valve. I'm going to go ahead and put that on the other side of my pressure regulator. Notice there is an arrow on the pressure regulator that shows the direction of flow. We want to be aware of that and make sure that the arrow is pointing toward your valve. So now I'm going to go ahead and tighten up my other hose barb or my other hose clamp. Now I would, if I were really installing this and leaving it there, I would go ahead and slit this insulation so that it would go over 
my pressure regulator and I would snug that insulation back up really close to the valve. So now I'm going to go ahead and push this back down in. Make sure that my valve is oriented correctly, straight up and down, and then tighten up my bulkhead. Just like that. Now if you didn't leave enough slack in your water line to be able to pull that up and cut it like we did, then you may have to take your unit up off of your concrete pad and do all this work from underneath. So if you take your unit up off your concrete pad, if you damage the foam seal that goes around the bottom of the unit, make sure you get a new one and put that in. That's important. It keeps air from getting underneath the unit and that lets cold air into your valve chamber. And make sure you use an all-weather sealant around the outside edge to make sure you seal that extra good against any, any wind or air getting underneath the unit. For more information on Ritchie products, uh, check out RitchieFount.com. Thank you very much.